Alright, so now we're doing some selected problems from chapter number 8. Uh, we will start off with number 42. Number 42 says to just write the full electron configuration for each element. So I'll just do A. And A is carbon. So if you look at carbon on the periodic table, um, it's right there. Hopefully, hopefully this isn't information for you. Remember, these are the S's, these are the D's, it looks kind of like a P, these are the, these are the P's. So remember, your S's start at 1, your P's start at 2, and your D's start at 3. So this is in 2P, and it's the second one over. So what we're going to have to do here is we have to fill up the 1S, fill up the 2S, and then move into the 2P. So the answer to this one is 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. Also, you'll notice that that, that gives you six electrons and carbon as atomic number six. So when it's neutral, it has six electrons. So that's a good way to check yourself. All right, next up is number 44. And again, I will do A as well. This one's the orbital diagram. And in this case, we're doing sulfur. So again, Sulfur now is right here, number 16, and it is in 3p. So we're going to have to go through the 3p orbital. So I do lines. Some people do boxes. You can do boxes if you want. Lines just depict the same thing, but it's just easier. So there's your 1s, your 2s. Remember, you have three P's, the PX, PY, and PZ. And so there's that, and then we'll move down to the next line to 3S, and then 3P. So we know we have to get through 3P because sulfur is in the 3P orbital. So now we'll just fill this all in. Up, remember, they have to be opposite facing arrows, opposite spin. Um, we know we're going to fill this whole thing up, but it's good habit just to do this anyways. Put one in each and then go back and fill the second one in. Again, you can watch my video on electron configurations if you have questions about this. Um, there. And then you see how sulfur is 3P1234. So again, 1, 2, 3, 4. It has to look like that and nothing but that. That's how it looks. You can't have like, if this guy's gone and you have another downline in the second P, that's wrong. All right, next up is 46. 46 says to look at the, the electron configuration to determine the element. All right, and the electron configuration it gives us is the electron configuration of argon plus 4s2, 3d10, 4p6. Well, I see a p6. I'm assuming it's a noble gas, but let's check this out. So we're at argon plus 4s2, 3d10, 4p6. So this has to equal krypton. All right, next up is 62. 62 is talking about atomic radii. Uh, it says choose the larger atom from each pair. Um, remember, I'm going to do A, but first, remember with atomic radius that larger is down here. So as you go down and left, it gets bigger, which then of course means as you go to the right or up, it gets smaller. So A is asking about tin or silicon. And again, if we look at our periodic table, here's silicon, here's tin. So remember, if you go up, it gets smaller. If you go down, it gets larger. So obviously, tin is the larger one. 
silicon is the smaller one and it asks for the larger. So there you go. Next up is number 70. Number 70 says, oh, which species is larger in each pair? Again, um, similar, but now it's talking about ions. So this is strontium or the strontium plus two ion. Um, if you think about it, if you lose electrons, you're going to get smaller, right? Lose electrons equals smaller, right? So this guy lost electrons, so it's smaller. But it asked for the larger, so this guy, so strontium is larger. All right, 74 says which is going to have the higher first ionization energy. Again, I'll stick with A. Um, this one's actually kind of tricky, so I'm glad I chose A. So this is um, actually the opposite of uh, size. This is if you go to the right or you go up, that's a high ionization energy. So to the right increases ionization energy, to the, to the up, if that's a direction, increases ionization energy. So for 74, it's talking about phosphorus or iodide. So if we look here, there's phosphorus and there's iodine. So we go to the right to get from phosphorus to iodine, so that's going to increase our um, ionization energy. But then we go down, which is going to decrease our ionization energy. So for this pair, we can't really tell. Um, we could look at a table and, and, and tell, but we can't predict. So you cannot predict this because it goes in ways that contradict each other, and we're just not able to predict that. All right, next up is number 78. Number 78 says, consider the set of ionization energies that gives you the first four ionization energies for an atom. And it says, to which third period element do these ionization values belong to? So really, the only trick here is you just have to look and see where the big jump is. Right? 600, 1800, 2700, 12,000. So the big jump here is after ionization energy 3 meaning ionization energy 3 is the last of the valence electrons, which means that this is an S2P1 atom, because it has three valence electrons. Um, it says it's in the third column, so the only thing, or third period, so the only thing in the third period with this um, electron configuration is aluminum. All right, next up is 86. So 86 asks, based on the ionization energies of the alkali metals, which alkali metal would you expect to undergo the most exothermic reaction with chlorine gas? So it's going to be the most exothermic if it uses the least amount of energy to remove an electron. Right? If you think about it, your chlorine is gaining an electron because it's removing it from your alkali metal. And so the, if we go back to our original thought, when you think about ionization energies, the smallest ionization energy, right, for ionization energies, it gets small as you get down bottom left. So in this case, the smallest is francium because that's the smallest alkali metal. So francium is our smallest. So if we're going to do this, and I don't know how important states are on this because I just don't. It's all kind of hearsay. So that's kind of what we're looking at. Um, and it would be francium for the reasons I described. All right, next is 122. So it says calculate the delta E for the reaction of this.
And yes, you're not, you're uh, kind of breaking the rules with the chlorine. Remember, it's diatomic, but in this instance, you can kind of forget about it. So if you look at the table, you see a couple things. You see that this, that's sodium turning into sodium ion plus an electron, right? That's sodium losing electron. Has a delta E of positive 496. And then chlorine accepting an electron. Right now, now so this we're, we would look at an ionization energy chart. This we would look at an electron affinity chart. Has a negative 349. And so this is kind of like Hess's law, where these cancel out and you end up with the exact equation you want. So you would just add these up uh, really simply and it would equal negative, I mean positive, 147 kilojoules per mole. And then last question, number 130. Uh, basically, the trick with number 130 is it says that your atom A has an effective nuclear charge of plus 2, but is 225 picometers away. Whereas atom B has an effective nuclear charge of plus 1, but it's only 175 picometers away. And the question is, which has the highest first ionization energy explained? Um, so effective nuclear charge definitely has something to do with that, and an effective nuclear charge is going to um, change your ionization energy, increase your ionization energy, but uh, the, the radius, the distance makes a much bigger difference. So this is going to have the higher ionization energy because it's much, much closer.